Yeah, in both <coughs> of those songs, they were uh, Kanye West songs. And one of the things that I love so much about his music is, I heard you mention sort of the like mean or like rude uh, attitudes a lot of the great composers have, right? Yeah. And the really interesting thing about Kanye is he's, you know, like this, regarded as like this genius, brilliant producer. He was originally a producer before yeah. he was an artist. And what's really cool about his music and, and funny is that he'll like produce these like beautiful instrumentals and then he'll sort of like make the vocals and the lyrics expressive of like his immature and like mean personality. Yeah. And it sort of makes for this really interesting dynamic where like the background instrumentation is like really beautiful and well organized and brilliant. But then you have like the actual composer's personality being expressed through like the lyrics yeah. and the expression of those lyrics vocally. Yeah. So it juxtaposition of two things that are rather different and that you don't yeah. necessarily expect to be put together. Uh, and that's something that's happened uh, over the centuries too, putting, doing things that uh, aren't expected, expected, adding a chorus to the last movement of the Ninth Symphony, unexpected, mm -hmm. etc. Starting the piano sonata in C minor, uh, adagio with a slow section rather than starting it, uh, allegro in a fast section. Uh, that wasn't expected either by Beethoven. Beethoven was a great one for doing things that weren't expected. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting too. Uh, the the th interesting thing about Kanye's music, and I wonder how much of this may be related to the experiences people had back then going to symphonies, is that um, with Kanye, you know, it's always album-based, right? And every single album, you can feel confident in that there's going to be complete disregard for what you want to hear, and it's going to be whatever he wants to present. Yeah. So it makes it for every single album release to be much more exciting. And I was wondering, you know, like throughout history, have there been composers where there's been that sort of dynamic with them and the people that love listening to them, where you knew that every single time you were going to listen to a new work of them, you know, there was disregard for what I or other audience members thought, and it was whatever bold, brash composition this composer was looking to create. Yeah, uh, perhaps the most notorious example is Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, which was premiered in uh, Paris in 1913. Uh, and the Rite of Spring uh, is a groundbreaking work. work uh, music in the 20th century uh, wasn't the same uh, after it had been written. And uh, people were going expecting to hear a ballet uh, with all the preconceptions that you have with a ballet. And then they saw this. And the idea is that to sac a, a virgin is sacrificed to the earth to enable spring to occur. Mm. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's not the sort of, you know, Swan Lake Ballet that you expect to see. And the music absolutely reflects that. It's, it's very dissonant, uh, uh, very earthy. And there was a riot uh, at the first performance. Really? Yeah. And that people started catcalling and wolf whistling, and there were there were fights that broke out. And Stravinsky, uh, who was in the audience, in fact, very interesting, Michael Tilson Thomas, who's the uh, director emeritus of the San Francisco uh, Symphony, has done a documentary on the Rite of Spring. And because you know money was no object, he was flown to Paris in the theater that still exists. He knew which number seat Stravinsky was sitting in. So he's in the theater, he says, Stravinsky was sitting here, and then it all started to go wrong. And he said he got up and he walked around and went behind the scenes to the stage to start calling out numbers to the dancers because they couldn't hear the music, mm -hmm. but they wanted the performance to continue. It's good to continue. And uh, it was fascinating just to see, he's known as MTT to people that know Michael Tilson Thomas. Uh, and uh, MTT walks and follows this direct route uh, to help us imagine what it was like to be at the first performance of The Right of Spring because there's no video and there's no recording. So that was one of the, the most uh, notorious, I suppose. <laughs>